Hey everybody, welcome back. I believe this is your ninth JavaScript tutorial. It's going pretty well. In this video, I wanted to speak specifically on comparison. Comparison operators. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that twice, but the first time I didn't really, I like stuttered there, so just ignore that. But anyways, I'm going to talk about comparison operators and logical operators. So let's get started. <coughs> Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anyways, they're designed to compare two values. Here are all of our possibilities. Equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So let's, let's look at these in English. Basically, this is how it works. Comparison operators in English. Insert the name of the operator into the space. So, is five blank six so we could take one of these let's say equal to right here is five equal to six no it's not or we could say is five greater than six no it's not basically Java just JavaScript runs this test like this five greater than six is it no so it's going to return false Oftentimes we will use this to return true or false for conditionals. An if statement, although we're not, this video is not specifically designed to describe if statements in detail, I'm going to be explaining them a little bit so we can understand this concept. Although if you want to learn more about this, check out my if statement video in the future. So basically, although we... All right, I already just said that. Basically, here's how an if statement works. If this is true, whatever we put in here then we want to do this code. So we can put what's known as the expression within here. The expression is either evaluated as true or as false. If it's true, then this code will be ran, whatever we put right here. So let's take a look at this. Here we have two variables. Here's an example of a simple test we could run with JavaScript. We, if we wanted to, we could get these values from inputs on the website so people could put their answers in the the code is going to process that and it will give back an answer so we have money in bank and then price of movie these are both declared variables and then we run a test if the price of the movie is greater wait than the money in the bank this is supposed to be less than <laughs> duh so if the if the price of the movie is less than the money in the bank, go to the movies. Basically that's saying, if the price is less than what you have, so we have $60, the movie only costs 6 That means we can go to the movies because we have enough money to do that. So, what it, it does, if the price of the movie is less than the money in the bank, and it is because it's 6 and the money in the bank is 60 then this code will get initiated or initialized or processed or, or uh, whatever you want to say. It doesn't really matter. The code runs. So here are some more examples. That, these all evaluate as true. 5 is equal to 5. 6 is not equal to 10. 9001 is greater than 300. 30 is greater than or equal to 10. 30 is also greater than or equal to 30. 10 is less than 100. 10 is less than or equal to 11. 10 is less than or equal to 10. So now we are getting into, I guess we could test, test those before we get into something new. So basically here I have a new HTML and a script I could say. Uh, we can make an if statement here, and it looks like this. Usually I make the outline first. And then within here, we could say 5 equal to 6. And then right here, I could say... Oh, man, I'm so sorry about that, guys. I'm, so I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. This is true. So once again, to explain this, if this evaluates as true, this code is going to be ran. So we're going to alert something. Well, this is not true, because 5 is not equal to 6. Therefore, this is not going to run when I refresh the page. As you can see, 
nothing happens. Although if I make something true within here, 5 is equal to 5, then I refresh the page, and this alert comes up, this is true. And we'll be getting into better ways to display our information rather than alerts, because alerts are annoying, but we'll be getting that into future video. So that is an example of an if statement. All right, so now we have logical operators, and, or, and not. These can be used to test multiple things within the single if statement. So here, and evaluates true if both tests evaluate as true. So basically, we have this really big uh, thing within the if statement, the expression, I'm sorry. So basically, we put parentheses between we put parentheses around each expression for visually to visually see what's going on. So if this and this evaluates as true, do this code. So if x, which would be declared earlier in our program, so we could say x equals 10. If x is equal to 5, it's not, so, and x is greater than 3, well these evaluate, this one evaluates to true, this one evaluates to false. So this is not going to work, because they both have to test as true. But if I made this 5, well now, 5, x is equal to 5, and x is greater than 3. Therefore, this code is executed or evaluates as true if either tests evaluate as true. So if x is equal to 5 or x is greater than 10. So I could say var x equals 11. Well, all right, this is false. It's not equal to 5, but x is greater than 10. Therefore, this code will execute. If I make this 9, well, now look, x is not equal to 5 and it's not greater than 10. Therefore, this will not be ran. Now for this one specifically, these will both never be true because if x equals 5, well then it is automatically less than 10, not greater than 10. Although because this is an or state, or a, or expression, sorry, that means it will still be executed, so that's good. The not evaluates as true if the test evaluates as false. So that's a little confusing, so let's look at this. If 10 is greater than 20, well, it's not. So it evaluates as false. But because of this uh, exclamation mark here, it's actually going to evaluate this entire thing as true. So you can read this in English as if 10 is not greater than 20. 20, then execute this code. So that would actually evaluate as true, this up here, and the code would be executed. So we can look at that in an example here. So we could say, uh, let's go 10 is greater than 11. All right, well, the reason we have exclamation um, parentheses is to when we add the not operator, it makes more sense. So right now, this alert is not going to be ran because it's false. 10 is not greater than 11. But when we add this exclamation mark, we refresh, it does run. Now to explain that a little bit better, if we just had is not 10 greater than 11, that doesn't make any sense. We want to test this entire expression with the not. So now it's saying if 10 is not greater than 11. Without these extra parentheses, it wouldn't really make sense. So that's what we can do for this specific example. All right, there's something you know about called short circuiting a test. So this is an and short circuit. If a test evaluates as false, the first one, JavaScript does not waste its time to continue testing the expression. So look, five, if 5 is greater than 10, and 
Well, this is ignored. That's because this is false. And for an and to work, they both have to be true. So if one of these is false, that means it doesn't even matter if this one's false or true because they both have to be true in order for it to run. So if one is false, automatically the whole thing is evaluated to false. It doesn't even look at the rest of what's in the parentheses. So this is going to evaluate as false and the code is not going to run. We can also short circuit ORs. If the first test evaluates as true, JavaScript does not waste its time to continue testing the expression. So 5 is less than 10. Sorry, that's supposed to be an OR here. This is ignored. Why is this? That's because this one is automatically true because once it's test, it's true. Therefore, one of the total possibilities in here is true, and the whole thing is considered true. That's how an OR works. Only one of these have to be true, either this one or whatever would be in here. But because this one's automatic already true, that means JavaScript does not have to test this one. It's ignored, and the code is run is ran. So that is a method to increase the speed of our program. So that's all I have to say for this video. Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry I kept stuttering the entire time. But, uh, yeah, that's all. So be sure to subscribe. To see? see what I'm saying, guys? I literally cannot say, like, ten words without... The, 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 yeah, yeah, you get what I'm saying. So hopefully that improves in my next video. So I will see you then, and be sure to subscribe.